we've already seen the first three architectures now we're talking about modular monolith so you started with the monolith you started making changes at the architecture level but what if you start making changes at the module level in the sense let's say you started with e-commerce and earlier you had all of the code in one place whereas now you started having a separate module for orders, a separate module for shopping, separate module for products, separate module for payments. So there will be separate modules now, right? It's still not microservices. It's still, we're just tending towards microservices, but this is called as modular monolith. There is separation of concern, and there's a lot of reusable code, which is basically what modules induces. Now let's take a look at why it's still not microservices. So you start with monolith, which is a big ball of mud. We've already seen that. The whole business logic is congested and also at the architecture level, the front end, back end, uh, everything is you know the same place. But we start tending towards modularity and the number of deployment units also start going up. So both of these are increasing as we're moving away from the monolith. And as we are progressing in our chart that I've shown you where we'll reach microservices at some point of time, we're we are increasing this modularity as well as we're increasing the number of deployment units. So what does number of deployment units mean? So it basically means that for every single module that you have out there, you're going to have a separate binary file and you're going to um, have it like have complete separation of concern. So like let's say if you had orders and shopping and payment, you would have separate builds, separate binary files for all of them, separate deployments going on for all of them. All of them will be completely different on the architecture as well, on the uh, infra cloud as well, at the project level itself, everything will be separate. Uh, but now, like I said, we're not moving towards this. We're instead, if we just increase the modularity and without increasing the number of deployment units, we will have something called as the modular monolith, wherein now you have separate modules for orders, shipping, payments, and so on and so forth. But they're all using the same database. With microservices, you have, an, you have a pattern where you use separate databases for all of these. So you have complete separation of concern. We're moving towards that. We're not still there yet. And also, we don't have separate deployment ability for every single module yet. We're still uploading a single big build file for the whole modulith, uh, monolith. Yeah, but it's modular because for programmers, for the team, it's very easy now to start collaborating on it because everybody gets to work on a separate module. Uh, but the build that's created, it's done still centrally. It's done centrally and a big build file is created. And that's still a problem, it's still not scalable enough. We want to tend towards microservices eventually. So I found this diagram on Google. It's not very high resolution, but I'll still take you through it just to understand the differences between modular monoliths and microservices, which people start confusing with each other after a while. So here you can see that modular monolith, you can see that you have uh, movies, shows, seat map booking, all of them have different modules now, but they're still uh, getting stored in the same database. Whereas for microservices, you have different microservices with different databases. And here it says single runtime in the sense, the code that you're writing is still the same language. Whereas with microservices, you can get polyglot runtimes. So movies could be uh, built in Python, shows could be built in Golang, seat map could be built in Java and booking could be built with uh, Rust. So all of them could have different programming languages. So uh, it becomes very scalable from an operations point of view because you can have different uh, developers with different skill sets working on every single of these microservices. And also you can have more specific databases in the sense you can have like a, uh, like a, Mo a MongoDB here, an SQL here, Postgres here, and some other database, you know, like graph database here. So that's the start, that's the benefit that you start getting with microservices. But we'll talk about microservices much more in detail. Right now, I just want to show you the difference that Modular monolith, you're still not there yet, but you have quite uh, a good amount of modularity. But you're still using the same database, and this leads to a lot of problem later on. And also, the problem of the big binary file that I told you about, so that also leads to a big problem later on.